Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh, if we are just using your phone, that would be much appreciated. We're going to be doing Q&A by the chat feature, which we'll be turning on um, at the end or right, right toward the end of the presentation. So if you have any questions, you can type them. I'll read them off, and Bruce will address them. So today's topic is precision ball screws, uh, rolled and world versus ground. Um, Bruce is going to be addressing some of the technical and performance uh, characteristics of the various screws that uh, Steinmeier makes. Uh, we'll be going through those, and um, Bruce will be, again, taking your questions. Uh, so without further ado, Bruce, take it away. OK, Ryan, thank you very much. And thanks to everybody for joining in today, and also those uh, coming in uh, after the fact online to your presentation. I appreciate your attention very much, and certainly hope you find the presentation informative and uh, look forward to the opportunity to interact with you uh, technically and on uh, application opportunities as time goes on. Well, let me just uh, start by reviewing our agenda. In summary, we're going to talk about rolled and world and ground ball screws, just what they are, how they are manufactured, and uh, details about the performance and applications uh, distinctive uh, among those types. We're going to talk uh, about lead accuracy, a fundamental accuracy uh, specification, of course, which is fundamental to their performance and their application uh, uh, optimization. And we're going to talk about some of the lifetime and, and cost issues, and also the different product offerings, particularly with the Steinmeier uh, product offerings uh, amongst those two. Uh, considerations on nut fabrication, that's a very important topic, something that's uh, near and dear to our hearts here at Steinmeier because we do put a lot of uh, engineering attention and uh, uh, detail onto the nut fabrication. So we'd like to tell you some details about that. We'll talk about some typical applications and the cost performance trade-offs uh, between the different types of screws. And then we'll wrap it up and, as Ryan mentioned, get into your questions and answers. So let's start off just discussing what are the fundamental differences in fabrication? Now, as you probably know, rolled and ground screws are fabricated in completely different processes. Uh, in the title there, you see rolled slash whirled as one category. Uh, what even the rolled and rolling and whirling are are somewhat different processes. Uh, there is a, uh, a similarity in terms of the type of accuracy and performance that uh, results from that screw. Essentially, for rolled screws, we're looking at the smaller sizes, perhaps 32 millimeter and smaller diameter, where rolling dies are, are preferred and economical. And then for the larger diameters, uh, those would be whirled. Uh, but uh, those processes tend not to overlap in terms of size and, as I said, result in fundamentally the same type of, uh, of ball screw performance. So for the purposes of this presentation, I've combined them into one category. So in the left-hand column here, you see some details for the, the, the rolled uh, fabrication process. Uh, it's designed for maximum throughput and cost uh, optimization. We're going to start with a soft steel bar that gets immediately pushed through the rolling die to form the initial thread. They'll then move to case hardening, and then we cut the length. Uh, we're going to kneel the journal area immediately after that, and then perform the journal machining. And at that point, add the center holes. So you see the, the center holes are coming quite late in the process and right before the final journal grinding. So this process is fast, it's economical, but at the end of the day, the center holes don't have the same precision and alignment with respect to uh, all the features of the screw. The grinding process is completely different. Uh, we will start with a soft steel bar, but we'll immediately go to the case hardening and then the center holes are added, and the journals are machined right away. So we have those centers as a, as a fundamental baseline for the dimensional integrity of the screw. Those are added very early in the process. And everything after that is ground with respect to the center holes. We'll move on to the grinding of the steady seats or the full OD. Uh, nowadays, we're grinding the full OD. <clears throat> in prior uh, history, we used to uh, use a steady seeds on longer screws and just grind around uh, those supports, but now we're grinding full ODs. 
and then moving to final thread grinding and the final journal grinding. And again, all the critical surfaces are going to be referenced to those centers and that shaft center line. The rolled and ground screws result in a very different dimensional performance and uh, a load capacity and other performance areas that we'll discuss in more detail. Let me talk uh, a bit about lead accuracy. Of course, it's a very fundamental performance characteristic of all ball screws. And I just want to talk about some of the key parameters here that would apply to rolled or ground screws. <clears throat> In the, uh, the top graph, you see two types of uh, errors shown. First is the average lead error, E sub P. That's an, an average error that um, is computed over the entire length of the screw, very, the most basic type of, of lead error. And the second is the, the lead deviation. That's B sub UP, shown in the, in the, in the bottom of that, of that upper graph. And that shows the amount of deviation of the lead that's permissible uh, as you travel along the length of the screw. The other uh, lead errors are shown in the bottom left and the bottom right graph. Those on the left-hand side, we have the lead fluctuation. And that's typically defined over 300 millimeter travel length. So what that says is there's a certain amount of lead fluctuation that's permissible over that 300 millimeter length. That is specified separately. And then on the lower right, you have the lead wobble, or sometimes called the nut wobble. And that is simply the amount of error that's uh, permissible in one single rotation. So again, a separate uh, dynamic, a separate uh, parameter from the, uh, from the lead fluctuation. So in general, for any ball screw, all of these types of, of lead errors can be measured and specified. Now, in terms of rolled versus ground, uh, all classified according to the DIN 69051 or the ISO 3408. And also, by the way, we have an excellent technical reference on our website. You have the link shown there. And if you go to the website under the technology page and the precision discussion, you see lots of detail on uh, these different types of classifications and the uh, performance characteristics of, of our screws. But fundamentally, in rolled screws, we're talking about a transport uh, type classification, T5 to T10. And the key point here is that the only the average lead error is specified. And also that errors can be cumulative. So for a longer screw, you uh, can tolerate a, a larger amount of error. <clears throat> for ground screws, and those are positioning screws in classes T1 to T5, all aspects of the lead error and the nut round are specified, all those parameters on the, on the prior page. So it's a much more detailed and much more tightly controlled specification in terms of lead error, lead errors and lead accuracy alone. Now, there's other standards, of course, that uh, come into play here uh, for uh, rolled versus ground. We have issues of uh, bearing journal concentricity, friction torque consistency, and also nut squareness. And all those are linked to uh, specified in, in, in ground screws. And fundamentally, you may have a screw that's accurate in terms of lead error alone, but you have other errors in the journal, torque consistency, that's going to impact your performance and create certain limitations on uh, your application fit. Now, one question you might ask is, can I compensate uh, lead errors? If a rolled screw has a relatively large lead error, can I just compensate that with closed loop servo control? Uh, without that kind of a closed loop, your lead error is going to determine the positioning error. Then you may say, hey, if I put a uh, linear scale or glass scale on my machine and implement closed loop control, I can save money with the rolled screw and still achieve very high precision positioning. And as long as the nut is preloaded, I don't have to worry about backlash. Well, in theory, that may work. However, all the other errors and limitations of unrolled screws are going to contribute to your system performance. For example, you're going to end up with uh, larger servo errors because of excessive torque variation. And all the other limits on lifetime and load capacity are going to remain with a rolled screw. So uh, closed loop control. It's very powerful, but it doesn't uh, eliminate all the design limitations on rolled screws. So let me now describe some of the main uh, aspects of our product offerings on uh, rolled and ground. 
Uh, as you may know, Steinmeier has uh, manufactured ground products for about 50 years. That's as long as anybody in the business. And our product line there is very broad and well-defined. Uh, our diameters run from 3 millimeters to 160 millimeters. Pitch all the way down to half a millimeter on the smallest screws. We offer a wide variety of nut styles, flanged, cylindrical, that includes with or without a connecting thread, and also single and double nuts. And also the Steinmeier proprietary technology that you may be aware of, it's called ETA Plus, which is available for the double nuts only, and it delivers quite a few performance enhancements with a low heat generation, efficiency, stiffness, and lifetime. So it's really a broad-based, pretty powerful technology, again, for double nuts only. Uh, we put a lot of emphasis on the deflector design, internal deflectors, liner, axial deflectors, end cap through the nut, and also our newest design, which is a so-called Z deflector, which is a, uh, uh, a 3D printed uh, piece which attaches to the side of the nut body for uh, very low cost and easy assembly. We also think we have the widest selection of wipers in the industry. Uh, we offer the simple plastic labyrinth wiper, a felt wiper, which is an excellent reservoir for uh, lubrication. We have a segmented plastic wiper for very high performance, and also the combination wiper, which adds the felt and the segmented plastic together and creates a dual stage system, which is really a tremendous performance advantage. And we have a, our latest innovation now is a detachable segmented wiper for very easy surface. So that is the segment of plastic fingers, but with the uh, slit, so it's detachable even when the screw is installed. So that's very interesting. A lot of people are asking about that type of wiper. So all that variety is available on, on ground products. Uh, for roll products, most of the same sizes are offered also as finished screws, except for the very smallest diameters, of course. Uh, we are now uh, offering roll products in bulk. It's one of the new additions to our product line. Uh, these are stock shafts in a three, mil, a three meter or a six meter length, and then the nuts come uh, with those on mounting sleeves. We have diameters all the way from 12 to 80 millimeters. Uh, there's a somewhat limited uh, pitch selection available with those, but nonetheless quite a bit of uh, variety to, to meet the most applications. Our nut styles are flange or threaded, and uh, deflector styles the liner through the nut and the end cap. But typically here an end user or distributor will cut the shaft, finish the ends, and assemble the nut to create the finished product. Now I mentioned we spent a lot of time on, on wiper design and fabrication, and, and that uh, holds the entire nut itself. And then our basic message to the market is that not all nuts are the same and the fabrication and design has a very important impact on the final performance of the finished screw. A key point about Steinmeier is that all of our nuts are ground, uh, even for rolled products. So we're delivering a very high value, high quality product uh, throughout our, our entire product line. Um, those nut designs deliver high speed ratings, so we're going up to 120,000 DN, uh, and again, even with the rolled shafts for the stock product, Compared to uh, a lot of other competitors in the business, it's probably more around 80,000 for the limitations. And for our fully ground shafts finished product, uh, we even have designs going up to 160,000, our ultra speed design. So the nut has a very high impact on your, uh, on your screw performance, and Steinmeier puts quite a bit of attention into that facet of the product. In terms of application distinctions between uh, rolled and ground, uh, historically, rolled have been aimed at lower precision and lower speed applications. This would include something like uh, pick and place devices, actuators, robotics, and the like, where precision is not demanded and, uh, and, and speed is not demanded. But of course, you don't want to over-engineer the product, so a more economical solution of rolled is a perfect fit. For ground screws, you're looking at higher precision and higher speed applications. And of course, that gets into CNC machining, milling, grinding, profiling, and turning. And then on the positioning side, uh, positioning devices for stages or other types of high demand positioning and metrology applications, you really have to have the high precision. And so a ground screw is going to be your solution.
So those are the two main categories for uh, the typical distinction between rolled and versus ground. So just to give you a little more detail on an actuator requirement, for example, uh, low precision, low precision, low speed, and also a low to moderate type of a duty cycle. So typically there you're going to have a rolled screw that may be uh, specified in a P7 accuracy, which is the bin range of the, the rolled uh, product line. No preload is required. You'll have axial play, but in an actuator, it doesn't matter. Uh, it will not affect your performance, so no preloading is necessary. And also for that low duty cycle, you're going to be able to use the screw up to a fairly high percentage of dynamic load capacity. So typically here, 50 to 100 percent of dynamic load capacity. For CNC machining, of course, a very different application. You've got high precision and or high speed. As long as you have one of those requirements, you're very likely looking at a uh, ground product. And of course, uh, a moderate to high duty cycle. So here we'll have a ground screw in the mid-range P5 accuracy, maybe P3 accuracy in some cases. It's going to be preloaded, so you've got zero axial play for optimum servo performance. In this case, because of the higher duty cycle, you're looking at a lower percent of dynamic uh, load capacity. So we'll be specifying anywhere from 10 to 30 percent of that in order to achieve the necessary lifetime. So in conclusion, rolled screws are definitely preferred as an economical solution where you've got low precision or low load applications. Uh, as soon as you have demands on high precision or high loads, you can be moving into a ground a ball screw. Uh, nut design has a very important impact on the performance of the finished product, so you want to be careful about your selection there. And in the end, a detailed study of your application requirements is going to determine the final choice. And so, of course, consulting with a Steinmeier engineer about your needs is always the best step. I appreciate your attention very much and uh, look forward to answering any questions. Bruce, we got a few questions in on chat and then a couple beforehand. And, and one is very direct is, you know, Steinmeier has always talked to me about ground screws. Why are you introducing rolled screws? Yeah, that's a great question, and uh, you know we've had uh, uh, rolled screws uh, in uh, across our product line for a long time. Of course, uh, ground has always been our our, our lead product, and that's uh, going to be requirement of, of machine tool in industry, which has been our leading application area. We've had uh, large demand in Europe in recent years for the the rolled product, and actually, in the, uh, we've got several very successful distribution arrangements in place in uh, Germany and Italy. And so now we're bringing that same product to the U.S. And again, we feel so strongly about our nut technology and our, our nut offerings that we can offer a, a uh, higher performance finished product with the ground nuts and really bring a distinct uh, competitive advantage to the U.S. and enjoy the same success we've gained in the past uh, few years in Europe. A related question, Bruce, uh, that came in was, you know, what's, what's the difference between your rolled screws and other manufacturers? Well, uh, again, we're offering the ground nuts in combination with the, with the bulk product. So the, the, the combination there is extremely high quality and, and distinctive in the marketplace. Uh, our shaft pricing is uh, very, very competitive. So we think in combination it's a, it's, a, it's a great value proposition for the market. Question that just came in, Bruce, I'm going to hit you with it off the side. Do ground screws only offer a speed advantage when the speed limit is based on screw natural frequency? Well, as you are indicating, there are different sources for speed limitation. You know, the DN rating is one, also the uh, resonant frequency, and uh, uh, other characteristics come in to create the final speed limitation. So that would require a more detailed assessment, uh, but um, the ground screws are, are going to have a higher speed capacity and load capacity. And if there's a bit of a follow-up, is you know why, why is the reason for the speed difference between rolled versus ground? Well, you know, in terms of the, the nut quality, you know, the, the, the DN value is driven by the nut design and nut fabrication. So we can achieve, with a higher quality nut, we can achieve a higher speed rating for any screw. So it's not rolled versus ground there per se. In that, in that case, in terms of speed rating, the nut design is really driving the solution. 
question about uh, stock and uh, pricing. So what's, what's the status of that? Yeah, we're actually uh, are planning to stock product uh, here in the U.S., either at our uh, uh, Boston area headquarters where we have a warehouse or a central distribution site. So that uh, should be coming sometime in the near future, and I encourage you to uh, look out for that, and we'll certainly make announcements as that develops. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, pricing, I think just as a general rule of thumb in terms of the you know, road versus ground price uh, deltas, you're probably looking at something at uh, maybe 25, 30% as, as a rough figure. So it is significant. If there's any other questions, feel free to send them in now. Um, Bruce, can you go into the, the various nut offerings that are available with ground versus the rolled again? If we could readdress that, that was a question that came in. Yeah, I want to go back to I'll that back uh, to page, which is a good summary. Okay, this shows our ground product offering. So again, the nut styles, you know, on ground we offer our, our wise selection in, in uh, uh, shaft size and, and nut style. So here we've got flange, cylindrical with connecting thread and without, and single and double nut. And on the double nut we have the Edda Plus technology. Uh, also the wise uh, availability of, of deflector design for ground product. For rolled, uh, nut styles are limited to flange and threaded. Um, we do have the uh, uh, liner deflector available and the, through the nut and the end cap. So it's a more limited uh, selection, but we find that those are sufficient enough to support the, the application requirements and the, and the market demand. And then the dia diameters of the shafts, again, are, are a bit more limited on rolled. Uh, most of our Product variety is in the 16 to 80 millimeter, and we do have um, a, a 1.5 down on 12 meter shaft. And I did put out the last call for questions. We did get one that is uh, probably going to be best addressed online, uh, offline. Is, uh, but for those in the audience, it was you know rolled screws versus sleeve nuts if they're purchased separately and, and paired by a customer and user. You know how is the ball size selected? And I think that's a bit of a detailed application specific question. Uh, but still one uh, worthy, and, and perhaps we can put that out even as a blog post uh, to answer that That's up. a very good question. Yeah, that's a, a great idea. We'll, we'll definitely uh, post a blog on that. I mean, fundamentally, the ball size is going to be selected to meet the preload requirement. So that's a standard on a uh, on ground screw with uh, a preload specification. We can select the exact ball size for that actual screw during assembly to meet the, the preload target. So it's a very meticulous process for ground screws. We'll follow up with more details on the, on the blog, plug, blog post, absolutely. Excellent. Well, it, for those who are going to be at IMTS, Steinmeier will be there, uh, and we'll have its full complement of products and uh, some, some new announcements that will be coming out. And if you're on our email distribution list, uh, you'll look for something very soon. Uh, with that, thank you very much. Uh, Bruce, thank you. Thank you, Ryan. And we'll be uh, emailing out a recording of this webinar uh, very soon. Thank you all.